Hi everyone! First of all, thanks for making it here through such a cold weather <laughs> today. Um, my name is uh, Anya uh, and I'm working as a front-end developer at UNO and here today I am uh, to talk with you about front-end. So is there anybody uh, who knows front-end or is a front-end developer here? Yeah, okay. You can stand up and leave. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, okay, for everybody else, I will uh, start to uh, explain what frontend is. Uh, and uh, for that, let's open our browser. Uh, I will open Chrome. And uh, you know, there are uh, the browser just an application that you ins install on your notebook. And uh, there are a few popular ones there is Chrome, there is Safari, there is Firefox, but you already know that. Uh, so let's open our GitHub page. And um, I have a small exercise for you just pick up your mouse and uh, do the right click uh, anywhere on the page and click inspect option and uh, on the right side you will see the dev tools that you probably saw before at least we worked with uh, uh, console tab before uh, and if you're a front-end developer you will spend a lot of time a lot of time here so uh, in the elements tab uh, you can see uh, some HTML and um, Basically, HTML is the base for the front end. So, uh, what HTML is, right? Uh, HTML stands for the hypertext markup language. And the base word here is text, because uh, at the beginning, HTML was invented uh, for uh, big scientific texts. So, it stayed, uh, it stayed the, that way. It is basically the text with some text around it. Uh, and here you can see there is HTML tag, there is head tag, there is body tag, div tag. Uh, and I mean, probably if you're a person from 2018, you know some HTML tags already. Can anybody say some other HTML tags? Raise your hand. Yeah. Um, map, arrow, main, article. Mm. Oh, nice. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're starting really slow, but we will get there. Thank you. <laughs> and um, if you will click on any tag, and again, let's do another small exercise. Pick this arrow and uh, uh, highlight new pull request button. This way uh, you will see the, uh, the HTML for this button in the dev tools. And uh, below you can see the CSS for this button. And uh, again, CSS stands for the uh, cascading style sheets and keyword here is style. So basically, CSS uh, is the way to style HTML blocks. You can think about uh, HTML as the building uh, blocks or bricks of your application, and CSS is the way to uh, style them and make them look uh, prettier or whatever you want them to look like. So for example, for our new, uh, new pull request button, we can click on element style and try out some CSS here, like color, for example, color red. Can everybody see that? Or should we make it bigger or smaller? Or mm -hmm. nobody cares? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's try something else. Weeds, for example. Well, this is uh, uh, quite simple CSS. But yeah, well, you still can like kind of break stuff, <laughs> and uh, yeah, because CSS is hard. And for a long time, being a good front-end developer meant being really good with both HTML and CSS. 
but it's not that way right now because in the browser there is not only HTML and CSS. There is something else here. And surprise, surprise, that is JavaScript. <laughs> and yeah, we can write code, we can run code inside browser. And essentially JavaScript was invented as a language for browser to communicate with browser. And only later it went to backend so that now we can run it uh, with Node in our terminal. Okay, so um, in order to talk about modern front end, I would like you, I would like to take you uh, back and to look through the history of web development a little bit. And I, I found this uh, nice website for you from uh, 1996. <laughs> um, and this is how the web page looked back then. Um, at the top, you can see the URL address, and it starts with warnerbrothers.com, and uh, this is a domain name. And after that, uh, there is something that looks very familiar to the uh, path to a file, and that's basically what it is. Uh, because uh, back then, the web page was just the HTML file, like a physical file that you save somewhere on your computer, or in this case, on the Warner Brothers server. And then the browser asks for this file and displays it. And that's uh, what it was. Uh, let's uh, open DevTools again. But this time uh, we will go to other tab, which you will also see a lot <laughs> if uh, you will go into front end. This is the network tab. And here you can see all the uh, request that browser sends uh, to a server in order to display this page. Right now it's empty because I didn't refresh. So let's refresh the page and see uh, what are the requests. And the very first request, gemhtm, it, it's, uh, this is a request for this HTML file. Uh, and even in the preview folder, you can see how the browser response looks like. So basically, browser just gives the physical file. And other requests are for pictures that are displayed. Um, if you will click uh, on a link, for example, on this orange bowl, uh, we will see another HTML page with, with the requests. And uh, why am I telling about it? Uh, in order for you to understand that this is how web started. There were only uh, HTML files uh, connected together through hyperlinks. And web stayed that way for quite some time till it gained popularity a little bit, at least, I mean, in 90s, <laughs> who knows, a <laughs> long time ago. And uh, at some point, the HTML pages became quite big. And in order to maintain all the pages, all the text inside the, of the HTML, you had to do a lot of copy-pasting back and forth. And people kind of get, uh, uh, and uh, people decided to get better with that and to do that programmatically because that is what programming languages are for, to do our life easier. Uh, that is uh, how, I think, in 1996, uh, Booking.com was Booking.com, you know, the website for hotels booking. It's still, it's still there, it's still quite popular. Uh, so these guys, they, fr they first uh, introduced the idea of, uh, Back of having backend scripts who will generate HTML for us so that we don't have to copy paste the text back and forth anymore. Because why do that if it can be done programmatically? And uh, for that, they used uh, a Perl language of one backend, and they are still using Perl to generate HTML pages. But of course, there are other backend languages to generate HTML pages, more popular languages like PHP, 
Ruby, Python, and in our case, uh, it's uh, Node.js. And uh, actually, in our projects that we already set it up, uh, we have such an HTML pages generated. So let's go to let's go to our project and take a look. Like I, su I suggest you to follow a little bit to make it more fun. Uh, I shared a new uh, I shared a new folder in our uh, in our GitHub folder, and if you already did Git pull, that's good. So you probably will have week seven. And uh, please go there. If you didn't do that, please do git pull or git clone if you didn't do that before. And uh, let's just run our backend server, right? Nodemon index.js. And in browser, it's on localhost 3000, in case somebody don't remember. Uh, let's go back to our backend code and see objs file with the routine that we have. And let's take a look at uh, person all list routine. As you can see, we use res render function and res render is the express function that renders HTML for us. That's what I've been talking about. So to render the HTML, we are using a people template. Let's open it. It's inside views folder. And to render HTML, we use pack templates, but it shouldn't be new for you because uh, we already used them before. And here you can see there is h1 uh, tag uh, with the text inside. And uh, we can add some more HTML here just to see how it works. For example, we can have three h2 and uh, output person name here. And we can have h3 tag and output person h mm. this thing we can delete us for now okay. uh, and the url is person all list i guess yeah so here you can see a really simple HTML that we generated on a backend. We can do inspect again. And yeah, here is h1, h2, h3. Mm. But uh, the problem with that approach is that in order to get a new information, we have to reload the whole page. And um, the, uh, for a while, it was holding uh, front-end and web development back. Uh, and, and, and I think the uh, revolution here was made by Google when in 2004, they introduced uh, Gmail application. Uh, because b before that, uh, imagine having your uh, mail, uh, mail website open and you had to refresh the page each time to see if you got a new email. I don't know if you remember the times, like I kind of remember that when in yahoo.com you had to refresh your mail each time to see if new mail arrived. And when Gmail arrived, uh, it was fantastic because uh, you didn't have to reload the whole page in order to see the updates from the back end. Uh, and um, this gave front end a really good push forward. How, how was it possible? Um, because uh, there was introduced a special way to communicate with web server 
without requesting the whole HTML. Uh, we uh, now there was a possibility to communicate with web server and to ask only for uh, small pieces of HTML that you want to update without updating the whole page, or even go further and ask for object of data that. Uh, and leave rendering of the HTML itself for the browser script. Uh, that way, uh, we started to use not backend to generate HTML, but JavaScript in our browser to generate HTML for us. And uh, that uh, uh, gave a web development a huge push forward. L and uh, uh, slow, slowly the websites became web applications. And the difference be between website and web application is that web application is much more interactive and it is much more responsive. Uh, so that if you are a user, you can uh, click on different, uh, on different tabs. For example, here in GitHub, we can click search and the page, the whole page is not reloaded. We dynamically generate the dropdown and we can react to user input. Uh, uh, again, very quick because all this logic is happening on the front end now. And uh, that uh, that gave front-end developers a whole new level of challenges in front of them. So writing front-end uh, became uh, not about just writing an HTML and styling it with CSS. It was about writing JavaScript that could render, uh, that could render HTML, um, that could render whole HTML pages. And uh, Moreover, it, it uh, could render whole websites, uh, in, including uh, handling uh, routing itself. Uh, but, and by routing, I mean uh, when, uh, for example, on Booking.com, when we click between different U URLs, the loading of the whole page is happening. That means that we, if we are going back and forth between uh, different roads, it takes some, times, some time for user to see a new page. And uh, we really don't wanna, uh, we really want that to be quicker and nicer and smoother experience. That's why the handling of uh, routing can be done on the client side as well. And the way to, um, build applications where the routing is handled on front end as well. Such applications are called single page applications. And uh, that means that we have only one starting page and everything else on that page is um, rendered on client side, including all routes, including all pages inside the website. Basically the whole website is done on the front end. And yeah, it sounds a little bit scary and hard to develop, probably. Uh, but uh, we have a bunch of useful libraries to help us build single page applications better. The same way as on the back end, we have Express.js. On the front end, we have uh, such libraries as Vue and React and uh, many more but this one are, prob are probably the most popular ones. And uh, this is what we will talk about today. We will talk about a way to build a single page applications with help of uh, Vue.js. Okay, uh, before going further, maybe somebody have some questions, uh, but I mean, let's, yeah, Let's talk a little bit. Please ask something. Yeah. Uh, to go back there? Ah, okay. Sure. Yeah, I was. 
I was pretty quick. Mm. I, I think I forgot to tell how the uh, front end application communicates with back end. Because even though we can generate a whole HTML on the front end, we still need data uh, to display, uh, which is stored on back end. And uh, uh, the way to communicate is through REST API. And uh, we already have a REST API prepared on our back end application. Uh, so let's check it out. I mean, I didn't do that. It was there before. You already saw it even. And if you will go to person all URL, you will see that uh, there, there is a send function instead of render. So instead of rendering HTML, we are, uh, we are using the send function with, which generates the JSON. Let's see how it looks like. So instead of all list, I will go to all URL. And uh, now we uh, we are not seeing HTML. Instead, we see the object uh, with some data. And this object later, our front end application will ask and display this data in a nice way. Mm. So in order to proceed further, I will ask you to check first that your Backend application is ready and running. Uh, then that you have some uh, data in your database, so that you have some uh, people to display here. And um, also our other URL is for meetups. So I will ask you to check if you have uh, some meetups in your database as well. Uh, please raise your hand if your database is empty or if you don't have data on this URL to display. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can... Somebody can help and I meanwhile can... Uh, Sorry, I didn't hear. Ah, uh, it's really small, you mean? Ah, uh, okay. Well, it's not possible if I can do bigger the font, but not the URL. Is it better? <laughs> Yeah, the URL I can't do better, uh, do bigger, unfortunately. Okay, let's do it a bit smaller. So I will remind everybody quick uh, how we add, but I mean, you probably uh, remember we should do Axios post request. And I will add second event because we will need few events to display. And the second one might be view meetup, for example. Okay, but it works on the root URL. Okay, let's add one and then maybe another one. Uh, okay. Okay, I, I will send it just in case. So that everyone can have at least a few meetups to display. Yeah, I sent it in Slack, so you can copy paste the. It's an Axios post request. Is Axios available already? Uh, yeah, it should be. Uh, the Axios should be available on the, on the root URL. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, 
Please, please raise your hand if you don't have uh, uh, JSON displayed on this URL. And somebody will help you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay. Meanwhile, I can show you uh, how single page application looks like. Uh, we'll open our Uno Motors website, like break a little bit. And uh, you can see when you are switching between URLs, the the loader on a tab is not there. Like the the switch happens in a quick way because the whole page is not reloaded. Okay, but probably let's switch back to JSON. Do you have a question? Uh, something not working? Uh, Omar, can you please help? <laughs> I'm like Armor. <laughs> help here, help there. Do you want to look back to Maybe you can say which is your plugin. Ah, oh yeah, it's called it's called JSON Formatter. So if you if your JSON doesn't look the same way as on my screen, you can install this uh, Chrome plugin. For Chrome? I will send the link. Let me Google that. Okay, I will I will send the link and it will help you to just to display JSON in a nice way. Yeah, I kind of so used to that that I forgot that. And yeah, it will make your JSON look pretty. <laughs> Anybody else has any questions or can we get the JSON displayed on the screen? Daniel. Can you play games? So, as I said before, there are like uh, two big libraries to handle a single page application. First, the, first is React GS. And I mean, you probably heard about it. It's very popular. <laughs> the other one is uh, Vue.js. The other one is Vue.js, and they have a lot of uh, similar parts. And basically, that means that if you know one of them, you can learn another really quick because they are kind of similar. Uh, today we will learn Vue.js. Um, 
because it's getting more and more popular and also it's really beginners friendly uh, but no worries if you will grasp the con the concepts of UGS you will have no problem switching to react or back and forth um, some uh, the most complicated step usually is to start uh, and with view starting is really easy because there is a special tool to get you a quick start it is called view cli view cli and it's a special tool which you will need only once when you're starting your project and it gives you the basic setup to uh, get your project up and running um, the installation is really simple it's one line that you copy to your terminal and well you don't have to do it right now because I kind of installed the project for you but you can try it at home later and uh, it's just few commands. So first you're doing npm install view CLI with dash G. And dash G means that you are not installing this package inside the project, but you're installing it globally on your computer. And this is good because you don't really need this package inside your project because you will use it only once to create project itself. That's why it's better to install it globally. And uh, after that, you create in your project, and it's as simple as doing view create and uh, uh, the name. So I used this tool to create a front end folder inside week seven folder, and I will ask you to create a new terminal don't terminate your backend server because we will need both backend and frontend running so please create a new tab i will do it bigger and everybody knows how to create a new tab for the terminal or how to open it if you are using visual studio code terminal um there's a plus button just right so let's go to our week seven folder and then let's go inside front end folder and here we will need to install npm packages again because uh, we have uh, the set of uh, npm packages for the backend but front end needs its own npm packages so please type npm install Again, for front-end folder. And maybe you did it at home because I wrote it in Slack. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I'm doing it because I already did it. <laughs> and uh, after that, a command to run a front-end server and it's a standard command that comes with view CLI tool. It is npm wait, I forgot the command. <laughs> Let me take a look inside packages soon. Yeah, npm run server. npm run server. So please type a command, wait for the application to build, and please raise your hand if you have an error or a problem or you don't know what to do. npm run server. Okay, I will write it in Slack, right? Yeah, it's that, it sounds a little bit strange, but you can later change it to anything you want. It's just a default name that comes with uh, view CLI to it. Uh, yeah. 
Can somebody help? There is an error. Okay, and uh, don't forget to have two tabs. First tab is for your backend server, where you should have Mongoose connected and and the next one is for your, for your front end server. And if everything is good, you should see the name of the URL where our front end server is running. Please copy it or just click on it and op open it in your browser. Yeah. Okay, please raise your hand if you have a problem with running this comment and seeing the message. Still installing? Yeah, it takes some time because the internet is slow. So next time, uh, in, like downloading at home might be quicker. Ah, okay, you don't have to run UCLA now because I already did that. So you should do npm install and npm run server. You can press Ctrl C to terminate. Is that okay? Or you can wait till the end. Okay, yeah, before running this command, you should run it install inside front end folder. Front end folder, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is about this. What kind of error? Yeah, you need to go into the front end folder. No. Okay, you can click inspect and see that we have our HTML rendered here. Okay, please raise your hand if you don't see this screen on your computer yet. Okay, so, uh, on top we see a small menu and then there is a picture and the welcome message and I really didn't do a lot of here. This is the first page that View CLI renders for you, like a starting point where you can proceed. And let's see how it looks like inside the code. Uh, Inside front-end folder, there is an SRC folder, and that is where all the code is. And SRC stands for source, and it's a very typical word for a front-end project. And uh, inside, first le let's look at the rotor.js file. This file was auto-generated by uh, Vue CLI. I didn't do much, I just added a rotor for meetups that we will display later. And uh, first route is for first page, the index page, and basically 
slash means that it's a root road. Can you do follow here? No. No. Where are you stuck? I'm installing now in the second front end project. Okay. Uh, let me know when it's finished. It's crucial that everybody see that Vue.js homepage, then we can continue. Okay, because if you are if you have node modules installing us for now, that's okay because I will do a small uh, explanation now, uh, and uh, after that, uh, hopefully, it will be enough time for modules to install. Uh, so for the for the root uh, road, we are displaying component that is named home, and uh, we can see it at top that it is importing from views home.view. Let's take a look at this component, go to our views folder and open home view. Uh, this is view component and uh, usually it consists of three parts. Let's take a look closer. First part is script and that is where your JavaScript code goes. And uh, here it's really simple. We just uh, export the component with a name, but uh, all the business logic usually goes to this part. Next part is template. And for template, we use uh, pack template, the same as we use on the backend. That is very convenient. Basically, the same language for backend rendering and for frontend rendering. And uh, inside, we render uh, image tag and h1 with uh, welcome, welcome message. Uh, the third part is missing here because I forgot, but the third type, uh, the first part is style. And as for now, I will leave it empty. Uh, but let's try play with it a little bit and add another line, for example, H2. Hello, I'm SPA, and SPA stands for single page application. Let's save and see. Uh, the best thing about Vue CLI tool is to, uh, that it comes with uh, out, uh, uh, with uh, hot reloading, which means that you don't have to reload the page in order to see your changes. They, it's it's really convenient uh, if you are doing a lot of changes and switching back and forth. And yeah, let's add something to our styles just to try, for example, H2 with some nice color. Uh, aqua is nice. Ah. No, it's, it's not nice. <laughs> Come on, we are, we are in Berlin, let's do it black. <laughs> it's already black. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's just bring it back, back to black. <laughs> Okay, uh, do anybody have a question or maybe problems with following? Um, I, uh, I said a word component here and it's a little bit self-explanatory but I would like to t talk more about it. Actually, I would like to talk about two concepts which are very important in modern front-end development, especially in the context of both React and Vue. And uh, first concept is component decomposition and second concept is um, store management. Let's start with component decomposition uh, because uh, it might be a bit simpler and uh, for that I will open our meetup page. Let's take a look uh, how we can decompose to a components, uh, how we can find some components here for decomposition on this page. I would say that really good candidates 
for the component is the attendee card because it is basically repeated uh, with the same structure but having different data inside. So there is always a picture, a name of the attendee, and, and type. Uh, let's go to Meetup homepage and yeah, can somebody raise a hand and like name what can be uh, what can be a component here? I mean, uh, like don't be shy. It's prob it's not a tricky question. <laughs> okay, please. Like the sort of card with the picture and mm -hmm. the title. And yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. Uh, this is this. We might call it a meetup card, and uh, since it's reusable. I mean, it. Uh, we're probably using it not only on this page, but maybe on other pages. Uh, that is why it's a perfect candidate for a separate component. Also, maybe the category can be a component as well. Well, it doesn't have a lot. It's only image with a title, but still it's possible to put it in the separate component. The key concept with understanding if a Thing, if the part of the UI should be a component or not is its reusability. Uh, so if uh, it's something that you will probably use on other pages or somewhere else on this page, it's better to do it a component. And uh, actually, if you will master the art of component decomposition, you will be already a pretty good front-end developer. The other thing that you should master is, uh, is store management. So what is store? Uh, let's go back to our components and uh, components need some data to display. Um, actually, the component itself doesn't care about data that much. Uh, because it just have some placeholders where we uh, put a text which is diff different for each item. Uh, imagine that we have a huge web application with a lot of pages, with a lot of components. Some of that components might use the same object to display data. Uh, it's, uh, it's a natural thing. That's why we need a single, uh, a single point of truth where this data can be uh, where we can get this data from. Uh, and this single point of truth is called state. Uh, it's, it uh, might be a little bit similar to idea of a database on the back end, because state is also a place where we store some uh, information, some data, and later components just take it to display it. Uh, but uh, it has uh, differences because uh, web applications are much more interactive than backend, and a lot of and a lot of state that is happening on web application is a temporary thing. For example, if uh, user clicks on a tab, or if user scrolls, some of the things we need to store, but only. Uh, by, but only till user is on the web page. So uh, while the backend database is there for a long time, basically while uh, we need it is there, the front-end state is there only while user is going through our web page. As when user closes our web application, the state goes back to its default. Uh, but uh, one, uh, but one thing is to get data from state, but we need to interact it the other way around. The component needs a way to change a state. Uh, for example, if user uh, clicks on a button or picks uh, uh, some other page to go to, we need uh, mm -hmm. Send. We need. Uh, we need uh, a way to send uh, a new data to a state based on the user interactions. This. Uh, that is why uh, state doesn't come by itself. 
it comes together with uh, action and uh, action is a keyword which is uh, used uh, inside of the view universe and uh, action is uh, a way to is a way for a component to change a state the storage library that we use in view for that is called viewx and i will open the web page because there is a nice picture that i will use for the explanation um, here we have a state and there is an arrow to view component that means that view component takes data from state to render itself uh, after that um, a component uh, have an opportunity to dispatch an action and uh, action uh, can have some business logic to change a state it can be different type of logic very often the here the request to backend api happens so as uh, i showed you before we have this json on our backend and we would like to get those data to show inside our components. So our front end uh, will send the request to backend API. And this JSON object is uh, what API will return. And uh, after we get this data from the API, we commit a mutation. And a mutation is a function that have access to state and which, which can change a state. So mutation will get data from action and put it into state. And later component will be able to take this data from state. This is called a, a one-way data flow. That means that we have a setup agreement, a setup state of rules that in future in perspective will make our lives as front-end developers as easy as possible so following these rules makes writing a code easier even if at first glance it uh, might look over complicated in longer perspective uh, such uh, agreement on one-way data flow makes code much more readable and maintain maintainable uh, so this green square stay, uh, uh, is there to mark the storage block. And as I said, storage consists of three parts. It is state, it is action, and this is mutation. Let's see how these three blocks uh, look inside our code. Maybe it will be a little bit, a little bit clearer then. Uh, let's open store folder and um, inside i created models for each page right now we will have only one page with meetups so let's open this file and uh, on the top of it we can see the state in the beginning state is an empty object there is only empty array inside this is how we usually begin because we don't have any data in the beginning uh, here you can see actions uh, and one of the actions we have only one now uh, it is called fetch meetups and um, this is a function that will uh, send an uh, axios request to our backend to uh, to get this json object that we prepared so you can see the url here is localhost meetup all and the same URL is here. So we are just sending the access request to get the data from this URL. And uh, uh, after we, will, we are getting the data, we commit the mutation, which is, this is just the name of mutation. It can be any, any string. I called it request success. And I send the data that we got as a reply of our Axios request. This is the name of mutation, so let's move forward to the mutation object. And here inside we have only one mutation again, uh, which is called request success. This is the one that we called inside action. And uh, it gets a first parameter, the state. 
because we will need to modify state inside this function. And the second parameter is data. Basically, it's the, it will be the object that we get from the backend. And inside the function is really simple. It just uh, saves the data inside state. So after we will call fetch meetups, hopefully inside our state data, we will get the array from our backend. Mm. Let's take a look in the browser. Like I al already set it up inside router, there is a meetups URL and this is the one that you can see on top. You can just click meetups and uh, hopefully you will have the uh, same data as we have in this JSON displayed here with the help of you. It's localhost 8080 meetups. But yeah, you can just click the uh, menu on top. Let's go to the network panel and uh, see the request to, uh, to the backend which, where we get this data from. Let's reload and pick a XHR tab. XHR, uh, like there are different types of data that we can get from the web server and the REST API request is in XHR tab. This is the one, you can click on it and there is preview tab. So here you can see all the data that we get from uh, the backend. And if you will click to headers, you will see where the request went and it went to localhost meetup all. So it basically went to this URL. Okay, let's, uh, uh, let's make a pause. This let me know if you need any help, if you don't have the meetups displayed here, if you have any problem. Uh, can everybody see it? Like raise your hand if you don't see the meetups the same as you edit on the back end displayed here. And raise it high. If you do this, it's kind of difficult to know. Okay. Let's uh, let's see. We saw a network request to the backend API. Uh, but we didn't see a code for the component to display it. That's why it might look, of course, a little bit uh, strange right now. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. That, uh, so, the question is where the actual action to fetch data from the backend is happening. And that is what I will show now. Thank you. Let's go to our meetups uh, inside views. There is meetups view component. And this is a component that we use for this router to display data. So let's take a look what is happening here. Uh, first, let's take a look at the template part. Again, we are using pack template for it. At the top, there is um, H, uh, H1 hello. Then we are checking if meetups have a lens. And if they are, we are displaying here, the line here are the meetups. After that, we are using for loop to go through it uh, to go through each meetup and this letter in front stays for the view so uh, these are both view directives first is conditional directive to uh, check a condition and 
other one is uh, a for loop. And inside the for loop, we display the ID name and location of each meetup. Okay, now, where the data comes from? Uh, let's assume that we already have this data inside our, our state. So we need uh, a component to know about this data and to map this data basically. And for that we use map state helper. So what map state does, it goes inside state, meetups is a model name, and then data is the name of the array in our in our storage. So here is the storage. As you remember, we have data here. So we take this data array and save it into meetups variable that we later use inside template to display data. Now, in the beginning, our data array is empty. So we kind of need to send this fetch action in order to send the request to a backend. And we do it inside this component. There is a created method. It's a special name inside view components. And this method is called when the component is created, basically when it just appears on a page. And inside this created method, we call uh, fetch meetups. So what is happening on the page load? Uh, first, uh, the component is loaded and first thing before everything that is happening is created method so we call fetch meetup action which is inside storage after that the axios request goes the mutation happening which changes the state and in the end we had uh, the data that we get from the backend inside data array and then with the help of map state this data comes into meetups variable that we later use inside template and uh, that that's that's it yeah just one second uh, so first thing uh, first connection is to get data from the state and the second way is to uh, send an action to change the state and uh, uh, the name of the action how we bind it to the component how we can actually use it inside component is with the help of map, uh, map actions this is also a special function the same as map state which comes as a part of UX library and it just basically helps to connect this method to our component so that the component will know about this action. Yeah. So you answered the question. So my question was uh, where the um, map state come from and you said it was mm -hmm. from UX. Yeah. yeah, both map actions and map state are special functions that come with UX library. But they're not from JavaScript, they're from UX. Yeah, they're from UX, right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand the connection between meetup.new file and meetup.js file. Um, so, uh, we no, we are not importing them directly. The way for them to communicate is with the help of these two functions, map action and map state. They are smart functions. They come from the Vuex. Mm -hmm. And Vuex is the library that manages the state. So first, uh, first uh, function map actions is to get the actions from the meetup.js file, like to connect these two uh, files together, kind of connect. And the second map state is to get data from state. So this is how these two files know, know about one another. There is a messenger in between map actions and map state functions. The syntax might look quite specific, uh, but you will get used to it eventually. <laughs> so is there a naming convention? So it means that my new component file is connected to the same uh, name as my 
No, uh, your yeah. your file names can be different. The only thing that should be the same in sitemap actions this fetch meetups name of the action should be the same as you defined it here. And other things that should be the same is when you're doing map state, you are taking the data object from the storage. So it should be the same object that is inside storage. Can there be another function that is called fashion meetups? Um, in our setup, the function name, the not the function, but the action name should be unique. But there is an option in view X to create namespaces for each model. Uh, and if you are working with namespaces, then the name function shouldn't be. But in our setup, it should. <coughs> yes? And where, where did we um, install the view library? And which file did we have? Uh, when did we, the question is when did we install Vue and Vuex? Uh, they are installed with the help of Vue CLI, uh, but I ran it before, so they are already a part of the project. But if you will use Vue CLI, uh, just just a quick overview. Okay, go into guide, create a project. So there is a, um, when you are typing command create new project, view create, there is a survey here where you can pick libraries that you will use inside your project. And there is a default setup. Default setup is good for just try things out, but you can uh, also pick manually select feature, features. And then you will have a list here. And for you, I selected Babel, Linter. Then uh, I selected Vuex. Vuex is a storage library. And then I selected Rotor as well. Uh, but you can play with it at home, try to select different libraries and Google what each of them can do. Um, but yeah, the answer to that is that uh, I already installed them for you. That is why they're there. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I suggest to do a break now because after that we will write some some code. We will create a new component. We will create new action, we will create mutation and add new properties to a state. So hopefully after we will write some code ourselves, it will become more clear. Okay? So as we discussed on the meetup.com, uh, it would be really nice to have each meetup as a separate component. I mean, right now our meetups don't look that fancy to put them in a separate component, but we still will, because at some point our application might get more complicated and this component might have more things happening inside, more styling inside, and it will be nice uh, not to repeat code between pages. So <coughs> let's uh, create a new component, which will be called meetup, and I already created a file inside components folder. Please open components folder. There is meetup view file. And right now it's, it has three parts, but all of them are empty. So let's start with writing a new component. Uh, let's start with the scripts. And right now there won't be anything uh, Complicated there, just uh, the name of the component. So export default object, which has a name, and we will call it meetup. Okay. After next, uh, next thing is template. And again, for that, we will go back to 
uh, meetups and just copy this block with the meetup information, three lines, uh, the display of ID, name and location. So I'm moving that to our new component inside template. Uh, one important thing we should uh, add a wrapper around because that is what view requires from us and I will I will move this in a little bit okay please raise your hand if you have troubles following so far we added a script part with uh, object which has name meetup and we added a parent div which has inside uh, the lines with display meetup ID, name and location. So you don't need a component that for the parent. Yes, because we are using POC template and in POC the syntax is a little bit simpler than in HTML. Uh, yeah, double curly braces, this is the part that view comes with. So this is a part of the syntax of view. Uh, let's go here and import our component. So import meetup from uh, add components and add is a special symbol that points to the uh, src folder <coughs> okay components meetup view mm -hmm. we are we imported the component but now let us let us define it inside our parent. There is a special word inside view for that. It's called components. And it's an object where we will pass the component that we had just imported. So we are creating the components object and as for now it will have only one component that we imported on top. So now we have component defined, it's uh, inside uh, parent component. And instead of having these three lines, mm -hmm. we can just use a uh, meetup component that we defined. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's let's make a pause for everybody to catch up. So we are back to meetup component. Okay, let's let's take some time on this component and then I will switch to meetups.view. Okay, so in meetup.view, first we import the meetup component on top, and the path here is add components meetup view. After that, we define a components property inside component where we pass meetup component. And then we are using that meetup component instead of three lines that we had before. Okay, please raise your hand if you have troubles following. Yeah, because we have them now inside the meetup component. Okay. And just the three there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so the divs with meetup ID, meetup name, and meetup location. So this is uh, meetups view doesn't care about that anymore. It only cares to import the meetup component and to display it. Okay. But capital letters um, inside template, the letters are not capital, but when we are importing inside script, there is uh, the first letter is capitalized, so it's camel case. Okay, but uh, in order for a meetup to display meetup information, we need to pass actual data inside. Uh, this is done with a special view syntax. So please add brackets and inside, let's type the name of the property of the data property that we will pass inside. It will be also called meetup equals and inside we pass this uh, data object that we have inside parent. Okay, so this is might be a little bit verbose. So just to demonstrate, I will call it data. So we pass in the object which is named data inside meetup where we pass the meetup from the meetups object. Okay. And then the child has to catch this data object and it does it with the help of props property. So we have to let child know uh, what a parent passes and it is props is an array and uh, we pass only one property which is called data. Okay, and since I renamed it here, we will have to rename it as well to data. So after the data is defined inside props, we can display it inside template. It's, it becomes automatically the part of the component. Okay, let's save both of our files, meetups and meetup, and go to the browser, refresh, and we still have our meetups display, but now we display them with the help of separate component, which can be, in theory, reusable on other pages, inside other components, and uh, hopefully will make our life easier in future. So please raise your hand if you have troubles following or if you have some questions. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, let's maybe talk things through a little bit more. So we have our parent component. And uh, some piece of the code that we move to a separate component in order to make it reusable. Um, in order to uh, use uh, this other component inside our parent component, first thing we should uh, uh, define it inside uh, components property. So it's just uh, the uh, view syntax. Components is the view special word. And if we will have other components imported, then they will go to this property as well. After this uh, component is defined inside component property, it becomes available inside template. So inside template, we can reference this component with the same name as we defined here, only instead of the capital name, we will use 
the same name but start with a small letter. Uh, I think the reason for that is to keep the syntax of Park uh, in the same style. Uh, so that is why we are using it with a small letter. And the other part which might be a little bit confusing is passing data inside this component that we are imported because right now we only imported it and defined but it still needs some data to display. So here we are passing a meetup object which comes from the meetups array because here we have a v4 uh, before iteration. So the same meetup that we have in V4, we are passing as a uh, data object inside our uh, child. So that later a child can, can show data from this object. Um, good question. The question is what V4 and uh, maybe I will explain as well what we if is. Uh, as you can see, both of these directives and in view this syntax is called directive, they both start with v dash. Uh, basically, that means that this is a part of your library, this first letter uh, where. And uh, the condition is. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, so if this value is true, then we continue forward. This is the same way as in factor plates. And then the v4 is uh, uh, what we did before in pack templates, but with the help of for each function. So this is a way to go through each object inside meetup array, and then to display it, uh, display it separately. Okay, great. Uh, let's move forward and come to the more complicated part, uh, part to the uh, data flow. Okay, please let me know if you have other questions. Like, I mean, we can uh, talk a little bit more. Which one? <laughs> the path here is the same as inside our folder structure. So this uh, the symbol stands for the SRC folder. And it comes from the project setup. And then we have the structure of folder that follows inside. So first there is a component folder, and then inside components folder we have our meetup view. So this is just the physical path to our files. Okay. Let's try to move forward slowly. And uh, what I would like to do is some uh, it's to add some user interactions. And uh, in front end JavaScript there is a way to listen to all the events that are happening inside browser. We can listen for a click event, for a scroll event, for a tap event if we are opening browser on a phone. So let's try to do that. Uh, let's go back to our meetups view, <laughs> to the templates part, and under hello message, let's add the button. Button is okay. It will be a like button because each side should have it, right? So I type the button, and after that there is a name. Let's see. Here is. No, button comes from HTML. It's uh, one of the HTML tags, like div 
power span. Okay, uh, I'm clicking on button, but obviously nothing is happening because we are not listening to this event. So let's uh, add a click listener. View syntax for that is add click equals and in quotes we will call some method. For example, it will be called like let's save it and we will add this method inside methods. So in method objects we are adding a new line, a new method like and inside we can just have console log just for now. So hopefully when we will click on our button now, we will see the console. To see the console, please choose tap. <laughs> And let's click, and here it is. Um, we can set it um, here inside click, we just pass a name of the method. So this name can be anything. And then we define the method with the same name. So when we are clicking, basically we just call this like method. OK, okay but uh, now I would like to uh, save uh, likes into our store and to take and to read likes from there. Uh, basically, when we are pressing like button, I would like to save the number of likes to a state and then read from the state. So let's go to our store models meetup.js and add new property to a state. Right now we had data with our meetups data and we will add new property which will be likes. And in the beginning, we will have zero likes. So set zero likes. We have fixed it. We have to fix it. Let's uh, read this property inside our component. OK, does uh, uh, everybody follow? Like adding adding property likes to a state object inside meetups.js. Please, uh, please raise your hand if you have troubles following and somebody will help. Uh, well, the, uh, the question is uh, about the structure of models, right? So right now we have only one file, meetups.js, inside storage. Uh, and the store architecture is uh, kind of like a complicated topic, but at the beginning I will recommend to have one file per each road. Uh, so, for example, if you will add a road to display people, uh, I would suggest to create a new model inside store which will be called people.js and to put everything uh, which is connected to people instance there. And inside meetups we will keep all the data that we are using uh, inside meetups road. So let's try to read the likes property that we just added to state. We will do it inside map state. Before we read only data property from the state, now we will read another property. 
This new property we will call bags. And the syntax is the same, so you can copy the previous line. So we are reading from state, from module meetups. And the property is called likes. And uh, if everything is okay, we should... Ah, okay, we don't see the likes number because I didn't display it inside template anywhere. Right now, we only have it inside our script. So let's display it inside template. Now we have this property available and uh, we can display it under the likes uh, button. So let's have a div and inside of the div we will display likes number. Even even word likes, then curly brackets, and inside curly brackets the value of likes, which right now is zero. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's a uh, uh, pack template is converted to HTML later. Ah, that's pack template. Yeah, that's pack template. Ah, yeah, mm -hmm. So pack template is converted to HTML that we can see here. So if we will inspect this scene, it will show us the div. Okay. Yeah. Um, is it possible? Yeah, okay. So the question is Is it possible to uh, use template without uh, pack uh, matching? Uh, yeah, it is. Like we can write uh, uh, usual HTML here. And actually, this is the default option of view so i had to explicitly specify that we are using pack and also i installed few packages in order to make pack uh, work but by default you will uh, have the temp the html uh, language available here Uh, we have a uh, few models. We have models folder right now. And inside models folder, we have only one model as for now, which is meetups. And uh, as application grows bigger, you will have more pages, and it will make sense to separate your store code into some sections that make sense. One of the way, and it might be a very straightforward default way, to create for each router a separate uh, model inside store. So for example, if you will have a router for people, and uh, uh, then you will uh, uh, need to create a new model which will be called people.js and to keep everything, uh, all the actions and mutations and state for people page there. As for now, we will be using only meetups model. <laughs> Okay, so let's fix this set situation with zero likes. Let's let's increase the number of likes when we click on the button. Uh, so to increase the number of likes, we should increase. Uh, we should change a store, and in order to change a store, we should have action and mutation. So let's go back to our uh, storage and add a new action, which will increase the likes. 
and let's call it uh, add likes. Usually, the name, uh, the way to name actions is to use verb on the first place, and uh, and on the second place to use the subject. So this will be a function which again will receive a commit as an object, but it receives commit. Uh, due to view x so view x passes the commit to each action we don't have to do anything in order to achieve that and it won't be a sync because as for now we won't send our likes to a backend so it will be a sync action we will just uh, save it inside store and uh, Let's commit a mutation. So I'm just copying the commit line, but uh, the, the mutation will be called differently and we will call it add, add likes. Just a string. This is a mutation name that we haven't created yet. So next step is to create a mutation with this name. What should I type here? Can somebody give me a hint? Yes? Um, I would also um, write the brackets and okay. then the name uh, as likes. Mm -hmm. Let me copy that. Okay. And then you also want to update this property state. Yeah, state we should still give other property, but data we don't have anymore because here we passed data from the action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, sorry that I interrupted you. I asked the question and that answered myself. Uh, but uh, the difference between uh, this commit and this is that here we pass a parameter, and in this case there is no parameter. So we won't have a second argument here. Okay, and then what? Okay, my, so my idea was just to increase likes with the help of plus plus functionality because basically each click on the button gives a plus one increase. So we don't have to pass a parameter because it's always only increasing on one. So you wrote uh, exactly the semicolons in the line 15, just because they have been there? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, so we are deciding ourselves what our mutation should do to a state. In our case, when we are clicking to the button, <laughs> we want to increase the number of likes, uh, one for each click. So each time the click happens, our mutation should add one to a number of likes. This syntax is the same as writing state likes plus one. Just a short term. So I will use that. But now we have to call this action inside our components when we click the button. And in order to do that, we will use map actions helper. So before, inside our array, we had only one 
string with the name fetch meetups. Mm, and fit, fetch meetups was the name of our action. So, uh, how can I add another action here? Mm, who can help? I will put comma for you. <laughs> <laughs> And right. Yes. Both answers are right. And this. But now we have to call it in the right place. Uh, no, because created is called only once when the page is loaded and we would like to add likes when user interacts with our page moreover when user clicks on the button so where the call of this function should go okay that might be that might be confusing so i give you the answer myself <laughs> um let's look one more time at our button uh, we have this event listener for a click and it calls like method so it would be nice to call add likes action inside of it and the syntax is this add likes and call so i will remove console log and instead we will call add likes which is our action that we defined Could you also directly call add likes inside the button? The yes oh yeah that's a very good suggestion uh, we can let's try it this way and after that uh, we can try it your way as well. Oh, yay! So what is happening? We are pressing the button. The like method it co is called, which it say itself calls add likes action, mm -hmm. and add likes action commits a mutation which increases the state. The third part is if we refresh the button, our likes kind of go away. Uh, but this is because we only store it inside state, which is alive as long as the page stays. In order to save it between page reloads, we should send a request to database and to store it on our inside backend inside database. Yeah, but it's just the example that some data which we get from backend stays for a long time while likes disappear on page reload. Okay, let's try it. Uh, Let's try to do it simpler. Instead of calling method add like inside like, we can call add likes directly inside on click. And I mean, it should work. And then we can delete, delete this method to not override the code. Yes. So let's see. Yes, it's better. Okay, so. And I can use a change or change your date. Okay, so I changed the on click event listener inside button element. So before it was calling like method, but I removed that and now I'm calling add likes directly to make code less.
everybody's following up to this point, or, or do you have any questions? Your silence should be interpreted as everything is okay, or, or as you're not understanding it. Yes. Is it a question? Yeah, if we are loading, the state goes to its default state. And you can say what is the use usage of a state if it goes back to default after loading. But it's useful for temporary scenes. For example, if user clicks between tabs, or if user types something inside of the form, we don't need to store the data forever. Some data uh, there make sense to, to store only as long as user stays on the page. But the data that we really need for a long time, that data we can send to backend and store it to database. <laughs> On the back end? Yeah, we don't need them anymore. We don't need them anymore. <laughs> Anybody else has a question? So the the question was uh, if we have our front end, do we still need the back end uh, URL for uh, the one that generated HTML, the one that we uh, saw before, but it was uh, person all list. Well, I mean. When we will create this page on the front end for a person, and it will be your homework, uh, then uh, there is no sense in creating this page on the back end as well. So, if we have a front end, uh, back end we need only to serve as the JSON's object with data, and all HTML will be, will be rendered on the front end in that case. Okay, we can uh, do a little bit more coding. Could you store the likes in the back end? Uh, the likes, uh, well, uh, we can because uh, we already know how to store things in our database, but in order to do that, we will have to create new model, we will have to create new road, and uh, Mm, I, I think it will be uh, uh, backend work, and today I would like to do more stuff on the front end. So you can try to at home to store likes to the backend. Okay. Uh, let's maybe uh, recharge a little bit and. Uh,
play with CSS because it's always nice to, to have some pause from the view. And um, we can go to our meetup component because it has tiles empty, which is a shame. Let's uh, add a class to uh, first div. It will be called wrapper. And uh, we can use this class in our CSS to add some properties to make our uh, <coughs> meetup look a little bit more fancy. Well, I don't know if it worked with workout. I mean, I'm not a web designer. I cannot make things nice. I can only make them work. <laughs> um, we can try and add a background color. So you can start to type background and then uh, there will be a menu where you have uh, tips. So let's pick background color and we can go with Azure. Let's save and see how it looks like. Okay, it's a little bit bluish. Mm. I would say it in some spaces will be nice, so we can add padding property is 20 pixels yeah oh I would say it's quite nice <laughs> and for example okay sorry I was switching back and forth really quick but as for now I only added background color and padding and we can try something else does anybody have a suggestion for some CSS property border yeah I was thinking that myself. Border. One pixel. Solid. And black. OK, but black is the default color. I don't really need to specify it. OK. Well, it's still pretty far from this, <laughs> I would say. Well, we can add round corners. And uh, if I don't remember the name of the property. Hmm? I think it's border radius. Border radius. OK, cool. Okay, probably it's called something else. Let's Google really quick. It is? So let's just copy paste because this is the work of the web developer. We're just copy pasting stuff. Border radius 30 pixels. Hopefully it should be good now. Nice. Okay, let me switch back to the code. How we can change a color for the location only? By, by adding an ID. Okay, yeah, ID might be an option, but in general, it's better to style elements with the help of a class. Maybe a mentor class. The class is uh, the syntax of a class with the help of the dot. So we can name it dot location. So this element will have a class now that we can use in CSS for reference. Yeah. So I will type dot location. What should I put inside? 
Well, we want to change the color to gray. Color Okay, cool. Uh, there is an option to use RGB color for that. And RGB for gray is Grandma Burson RGB for gray. Three, four, three, five. What? Three, three, three? Wait, what was it? what were we changing? Ah, the location. <clears throat> no. Well, I remember the white color. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, thanks. Okay, not super user friendly, Maybe. but that's okay. You can click this square and select another color. Yeah. Maybe it's not plugging. Okay, this was a small reloading exercise. Because uh, that's what makes a job of front-end developer better. When we are tired of coding, we can always go to CSS and make things look pretty. <laughs> and that is better than back-end a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's... Go to our router and try to add a new page because we still have time and we can train a little bit for your homework. But homework will be for the to create a page to display people, and I won't do that. And uh, instead, let's create a page for to display one meetup. I mean, I'm not sure that we will finish that, but we can at least start. So let's add a new object here. Um, path will be meetup slash, and we will pass ID inside. which that will be a dynamic value. And that is router.js inside frontend SLC folder. And the name will be obviously meetup. Where is router? Is that popular? Uh, router is inside SRC folder. So under the main GS. The name is the name of the route? The name can be anything, but it's better to name it so it will make sense. So I will name it Meetup because it's about displaying, the page is about displaying by Meetup. And we will need a component to display it. Let's call it Meetup. But okay, yeah. It will kind of interact with uh, the name of the child component, but it's okay because they will be in the different folders. So there will be no conflict. So inside views, we would need a new view component for that now. And we will name it Meetup. OK, but since I copy pasted it, it has some stuff inside. So let's, let's delete it. So 
So right now we will have only the name of the component. And inside the template, we will say hello. So we created a new component inside views, called it meetup.view, and we created a new router. Ah, oh, wait, but we need to import it. So let's go back to router and import the component that we just created. dot views slash meetup dot view so we are importing it and then we define it inside router I mean we pass it as a component property Let's see if we will see our newly created component. What should I type here in order to see it? Meetup and then ID. So let's copy one of the IDs. Good. Okay, sorry, I will switch to the code. So not a lot of stuff in flight component right now. It would be nice to display a meetup here, right? But in order to display a meetup, we should fetch the information from the backend. Question, do we have an API on the backend for that, to fetch the data about meetup? Can somebody please check the backend and to let me know if there is a router to get only one meetup. Let's try it straightforward. Just this is the backend URL meetup ID. Let's see if we have a router. Yeah, cool. We have so now on the front end we have to fetch data from this IP endpoint. Well, this is our backend. That is the stuff that we used to have. And now it would be nice to fetch that object and to display it inside our view component. How can we do that? Yeah, with Axios. And where should we add this Axios call? In the script. But uh, it's possible. But as I said before, we have a convention to use store to fetch API. So let's add a new action that will fetch the data from the backend. Let's go to store models meetup.js. And we already have fetch meetups method here. So the logic won't be that different. Let's copy it. 
and name it inside fetch meetups let's name it fetch meetup mm -hmm. and what else should i change in this method yeah right the url uh, so instead of all we should pass the id here right because let's see the url the last part of the id so i'm changing quotes to the other kind of quotes diagonal quotes and instead of the all we will add id that we don't have yet so this is just a boilerplate we need to pass the id to action from the component and let's rename the mutation as well because we need a new mutation Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far um, I suppose that we will pass the ID and we will fetch from the server. Okay, let's let's not do committers for now. Let's stop at this point and instead of uh, commit, let's just do a console log. Console log for the result. And let's try to call this method from our component. And to pass the ID, hopefully. Okay. Maybe we need to make a poll so that everybody can follow up. And I will Google how to get a perm for view router. <laughs> I think I remember the syntax is this router perms. So as you remembered inside of the router we passed the ID as a parameter so hopefully there should be a way to read that ID from our URL on the front end and then to use the same ID to fetch data from the back end uh, let's go back to our meetup component and uh, use created method again the same that we used in meetups and uh, let's try to see if we will be able to read the uh, id param from the router i just google how to do that because i kind of forgot the syntax And this is this dot wrote dot params dot id. 
I would like to, to make a parenthesis here. As Anya said, she, she forgot how to, what the syntax was, and she had to Google, and that's okay. That's our job. Every day you forget how something is written, and you need to, to look for it. So don't feel, uh, don't feel like uh, you need to know absolutely everything uh, of the, about the library. You, you always need to Google and always need to, to look for your stuff. Yeah, I agree. So let's go to the browser and see if our console log will work. And it does, it displays the ID, so it reads it from the road. And now we can pass it inside our action because to fetch data from the backend, we need this ID. Uh, this route is a part of view functionality. So when uh, we create view with a router, then each component has this router available. Basically, this router params is available. And we can read it because inside router, we have this router defined with the dynamic property ID. So here it's named ID, and we are reading in and we are reading it the param with the same name here. Okay, so let's uh, call our action from from inside created. Uh, let me close a few things. I will copy paste the syntax from Meetup's view. So we will have map actions, but to use map actions, we have to import it. So I'm copy pasting the import as well. Basically, these two components will be very, very similar. The only difference will be that in the meetup, we need to read the ID from URL in order to fetch the data by this ID from backend. So we are importing map actions from UX, and then we have method object with map actions inside. And here we will call our action that we created before. How was it called? Can somebody tell me? Fetch, sorry? Yeah, fetch me down. Okay, and now we will call this action with uh, the ID parameter inside created method because we need this data right away to display the information about meetup so we are calling this fetch meetup and we are passing the id from the router forms Okay, so let's delete this console log to not confuse us. So inside created, we will call fetch up action. Fetch meetup, fetch meetup, right. So now, hopefully we will... Can you, can you just for a second stay with the meetup group? Yes. Sure. So first thing, don't forget to import map actions. Then call this map actions with the right action name. And then we are calling fetch meetup inside created. 
And this map, map action is specially from... Yeah, from it's, it's from Vuex, right. But this stream should have the same name as our action inside storage. This is where the connection is happening. Okay, so hopefully now we will end up inside our fetch method action and we will see the console log with the result that we get with the help, help of Axios get command. Okay, I will switch back just in case. But let's go to browser and see if we will see the, if we will, first of all, if we will send the request to the backend and if we will be able to see the result. Okay, so network panel, here is our request to the backend. It went successfully and in console we can see the Uh, we can see the response, but it looks like it's not what we need a little bit because inside data, instead of having an object, we have an HTML. So it must be the fault of the backend server. I mean, of course, if there is something wrong, then the, <laughs> the fault is in backend. Let's let's check. Maybe our endpoint. Gives us the wrong thing. Uh, you will have time to catch up. Well, I will check. So let's go to backend and try to find our endpoint. This is meetup with ID. Yeah, so uh, the endpoint is wrong. Instead of using this endpoint, which gives REST render, and REST render, as I told before, returns HTML, uh, we need other function, REST send, because REST send gives us a JSON. So the right backend endpoint to use is this one, because this will give us a pure object. So let's go back to our Axios request and instead of this URL we will use the one with the JSON in the end. Okay, it's in browser and we are adding the JSON here. So now it should be better, now it should return uh, the JSON object. Let's check. Okay, now it doesn't look. Now it does. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes. So what I did is inside fetch meetup, inside Axios get, I changed the URL by adding JSON in the end. Because this is the backend URL that returns the JSON. Okay, we are close. We have uh, a request to backend. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So I'm giving it to the URL for the backend, 
Okay, the question is how we know what is the URL of our backend is. Um, in our case, the setup uh, is pretty straightforward. So I just took the previous project for backend. I didn't change anything. Uh, and uh, by default, uh, the Express server is running on local host 3000. This is the default value that uh, Express gives. It can be changed, it uh, can be rewritten. And I think on our next uh, lesson, uh, when we will talk about Docker, we will talk more about uh, the way how to change backend and frontend URLs and how to make them work together. But as for now, localhost 3000 is just a default that Express framework gives. Yeah, but it's not my question. My question is how do I know that uh, I'm getting actually the catch of that information from this one that I'm getting from the backend, so I have to I have to know that I have to give the URL from the backend. That's my question. So, mm, so you, for example, you can check a network panel and see the request that we sent. And here is our request. We can switch to header tab and see where the request goes. And here you can see it says localhost 3000. And this way you can be sure that you send it to localhost 3000. OK? OK, so we are getting closer. Now we have an action that sends the Axios request. We get the data. Now we had to store this data inside the state. What should we do? I mean, it's the same as before. No trick, just uh, please help me. Mutation. Yes, yeah, we're sending a mutation. So I will, mm -hmm. to send a mutation, we are using the commit command. And we will have to create a new mutation and we can call it request meetup success and pass data that we receive from the backend. Sorry. Uh, this is because of the way how our backend works. So going back to localhost 3000, it's where we get data from the backend. And the URL without JSON, the one that I was using before, it didn't give the right data. Like it looks the same, but it's actually not a JSON, it's an HTML because on the backend we used our own function there. And the one with the JSON is the URL that returns the objects in the right format. But I mean, you're all a full stack developer. So if you find some mistake in your backend, you have a knowledge to go and fix. And if you're a front-end developer only, you should pick a colleague. <laughs> and that's for the help. <laughs> yes. OK, so let's create a mutation. Let's copy this. Oh, I made a typo. Let's copy this name. And add a new mutation, square brackets. Square brackets. The first, first argument is always state, and the next argument is the parameter that we pass. So it's data that we get from the server. And here we sh should modify a state or to write a meetup data inside of the state. Well, I didn't create an empty object in the default state. I will add it now. So I'm adding meetup as an empty object. And here inside the mutation, I will modify it. 
So state meetup equals data. I'm just storing the data that we get from the backend inside the meetup property inside state. Yes. Why is it in um, um, the, So the, the question is how we should name mutations and the name the name of mutation is why is not in single quotes? Ah okay, the first one. The first one isn't in uh, quotes because uh, when I prepared that project, I had a time to go fancy. So I had a chance to save the string into variable and to use variable instead of the string. So we can, we can do the same thing. Create a variable, save the string there. And then inside of the string, we can use this variable that has the string. Going with variable is a little bit better because uh, it's less possibility that you will create do a mistake while copy pasting the name because you can always name a variable in an easy way. Well, here it's named the same way as the string, so it's a little bit verbose. But in general, the idea was to make code easier, even by m making it longer. So, okay, what, what I did, I created add likes variable with uh, a string value add likes, and instead of using string inside mutation name, I use a variable now. But that was a good catch. I was waiting for that question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully now we, on our front end, we have data inside of the state, but now our company should read it from the state and to display it. That will be our last thing for today. But somebody will need to help me. What should I do? Uh, the tip is something with map state. Okay, what? Can you? Mm -hmm. Okay, but I already have it. So fetch meetup is called. Now I have to read from the state, the data from the state to display it. Well, let's take a look at our previous method. How we are reading from the state here? On what line? Yes? You mean 16? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's do it the same way. Mm. Same way meaning copy paste, okay. <laughs> because I'm lazy and tired. <laughs> Okay, but these lines should be different because uh, we need to read a different property. So I will type state. Oh, no, not a state, sorry. Um, meetup. state arrow and now let's read our property from the state how it goes it goes state and then what should it be 
Ja. Uh, yeah, right. Thank you. And then? Ah, okay, but it shouldn't be meetups actually, because after state we should use our model name, and model name is meetups. So the, here goes the model name, which brings us to this model, and here we should read this property. So after meetups, it will be meetup. Mm -hmm. So first it's state, then the name of the model, and then the data, the name of the property from the model. And we all and we store it inside meetup variable. So now hopefully we can use it inside our template. Let's delete hello and display meetup data instead but before we should do a really important decision what color should it be <laughs> okay not black come on pink okay that's a good one but I don't know the RG, RGB color for that. You should Google the RGB color for pink, and then I will use it. Let's let's get prepared. Let's do a class which will be name and color, and I will wait for RGB color for pink. Pink, really? Okay. Oh, Mario Akin of pink color. <laughs> I used the wall because I'm Okay. Oh. Coral. Well, if we put the effort to that. <laughs> we should be <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is more fancy. Yeah. This is a hot pink. <laughs> okay. And now we will display the meetup meetup the dot name in curly brackets and inside of the deep uh, diff with the class name, so it will be pink and. Other diff will be for meetup location. <laughs> okay, so what we did, we used map state to read the property meetup from the storage, and then we're using this meetup property to display inside our template. I want to see this. Yes, hot pink. Oh, sorry. Hmm? Yeah, some other. Thing. Yes, sure. Let's do H two. Then it will be. Yeah. Okay, so please raise your hand if you need a help, if you still didn't give up and you want to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Why can we have adjacent views? Like if I add one above like this, I get an error. The one above this one? Like this? Yeah. Uh, because Puck has a really strict syntax. So, uh, mm, okay, first of all, diff above diff means that they will be one by another. 
and uh, view has a strict rule that every uh, HTML that you have inside template should have one parent only. Like it's a view, it's a rule of a view. So if it will only work if you will have some wrapper at top, like one parent element, and then all this will be like this. Um, it shouldn't be a diff explicitly, but the fr the first parent should be only one. So, but it can be uh, anything, not diff. Okay, but. Sure. Okay, so on the back end, we have an API for people, for person. So the homework is to, is, uh, to add another router on the front end to display the list of people the same way as we are displaying as we are displaying the list of meetups in order to do that you will have to create new road new model inside the store which will call the backend api for people and you will need a component that will display these people on the front okay and if you still have uh, like we will finish on this point, but uh, we can still stay here and uh, take a look together at your code if you have questions or like continue discussions in the Slack. And yeah, I mean, I know that you're all full stack developers, but if after this uh, lesson you will prefer to be a front end developer only, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> okay, thank you.